Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. It's been a while since we last played this one, and today we're going to check out the Lorem mod on some of the other mods. Lorem kind of gets a little bit ignored, so it's going to be nice to hang out with Lorem a little bit more. Let's get through it. The mod, I think, kicks in on the second chapter, but we have to make sure that Lorem is in a good mood for that. So I'm just going to skip ahead, get all the right decisions, and then we'll move on into chapter two. There we go, we've gone through the, the second chapter meeting with Lorem, and it's gone pretty well if you check the status. Lorem is unimpressed, and I think he needs to be impressed. So in chapter 2, just as a reminder, Lorem's trying to make a video game, and he wants to do research on humans. So he invites you over for you to pose for him, so you can model, and he can do some drawings for you. But now we're on to the new stuff. Would you like to stay for dinner? It would be the least I can do to compensate you for your last afternoon. Let me see, what time is it? What should I do? Yes, we're gonna stay. As I look at the clock, a strange feeling comes over me. I felt like I'd been inside this apartment with Lorem before. I found myself compelled to stay for dinner, but I wasn't sure why. I had planned to go back to my apartment and order takeout, but a home-cooked meal did sound a lot more appetising now that I thought about it. Besides, it's been fun hanging out with Lorem so far. I turned back to the small blue dragon and smiled. You know what? I accept your invitation. Really? Really? Great. Um, what would you like to eat? I don't know. What were you and Ipsum planning to have? That's a good question. Neither of us actually decided on anything yet. I think it's just going to be you and me having dinner. Ipsum might be in his room for a while. Because of his experiments. Yeah, he did have a big lunch earlier too. Let's see what we can find in the kitchen. Okie dokie. Let's go have a look. We went into the kitchen and looked around. I found it to be small, but fitting for Lorem and his roommate. Lorem opened the refrigerator and we both peered inside. It was well stocked with food. He did mention having picked up groceries while I was posing for his drawings. I took note of a few things like butter, milk and two types of shredded cheese. I also saw what looked like ground beef. At least, I think it was, or something similar. We then inspected the cupboards for other ingredients. As I looked around the shelves, I spotted some dried macaroni noodles, flour, and a small bag of croutons. After looking around, I now had an idea of what we could make for dinner. I hadn't made it in a long time, but I was sure it would be delicious. Hey Lorem, have you ever had mac and cheese? Yeah, one of my favourites. What about homemade macaroni and cheese? You mean cooking it all from scratch, and not from a box? Yeah. No, I can't say I have. Then I think we've got all the ingredients. Should we try to make some? Okie dokie, let's do it. I opened the fridge and pulled out the milk, butter and bags of cheese that we would be using. Lorem pulled out a small pot for the noodles and a pan for the sauce. Before I closed the fridge door, I pulled out the hamburger looking substance and asked Lorem about it. Hey, Lorem. What's up? What is this? Oh, that would be mouflon that has been grounded up. Have you ever had it before? I haven't tried it before, no but I'm willing to give it a go. Let's cook some and add it to the macaroni. Mouflon mixed with macaroni and cheese? Sounds like a delicious idea. I took the pot and filled it with some water, while Lorem got a second pan out and began crumbling the ground of mouflon into it. We carried our pot and pans to the stove and turned on the burners. I preheated the oven too, as I wanted to add a final touch to the dish once it was assembled. I opened both bags of shredded cheeses and mixed them up in a bowl, while Lorem tended to cook in the mouflon. I then took a small bowl and poured the croutons into it and proceeded to mash them into crumbs. Once the pot of water was hot, we tossed in the dried noodles. I started preparing the sauce by melting some butter in a pan and adding a pinch of flour to it. Once the butter was melted, I poured in the milk and stirred it until it was bubbly. The cheeses were added next and I continued stirring the sauce until it was nearly ready and removed it from the burner. The Lorem removed the pan of cooked mouflon from the stove and drained the fat. I soon followed suit with the pot of cooked noodles and drained the water from it. We returned our cooked food to the stove. I reached into a cupboard and pulled a tray out onto the countertop. I proceeded to pour the noodles into the tray and directed Lorem to pour the cooked mouflon next. I then poured the cheese sauce to cover everything. I topped the dish with the remaining shredded cheese that I kept over in the bowl as well as the crouton crumbs. And now we put this in the oven just for a few minutes. Why? Macaroni and cheese is even more delicious when it's baked. It adds a nice golden crispiness on top too. Okay then. I picked up the tray and put it into the oven. Now to wait. Take the food out of the oven in 20 seconds. If you take it out too soon, it won't be completely done. If you take it out too late, it's going to get burnt. 
Okay, I have been in contact with the, the mod maker for this and they have warned me that this is a real time challenge. You have to count to 20 and get it right, otherwise it will be burnt. Okay, here we go. Ready. And bake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Am I too slow? Ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh no, uh, twenty. <laughs> I opened the oven door and carefully pulled the food out with mitts. The shredded cheese was completely melted, and the top was nice and golden. Perfection. Wow, that looks great. Narim fetched both of us some bowls and forks. I got out a large spoon and proceeded to dish out our helpings. It seems my cooking skills from my college days were still holding strong. The look on Narim's face was just priceless as I filled his bowl with cheesy goodness. Narim went and grabbed two small bottles of soda from the fridge and handed me one. With our hot food and cold drinks, we went out into the living room to dine. Nice. Success. Good food. We sat down on the floor at the small table and started to dig into our meal. I found the cheesy noodles to be exactly like I remembered. The mouflon surprisingly worked well with it. It might not have been hamburger, but it was still good. I looked up at Lorem as he took a bite out of the macaroni. How does it taste? It's delicious. It's way better than the box kind. I nodded in agreement and took another bite. I started to think back to what happened earlier. I still couldn't figure out why I felt like I'd been inside this apartment before today. Was it some kind of deja vu? As I was deep in thought, I didn't realise that Lorem had asked me something and was staring at me for some kind of response. Oh, yo. Oh, sorry. I blanked out for a moment. Did you say something? Is the food here in our world similar to yours? That's a good question. I would have to say that it is, yeah. I visited a grocery store earlier today. I noticed a lot of foods seemed eerily similar, if not the same. Okay, that's interesting. It might be something that could further influence the human creation myths. Maybe. Can I ask you something too? Sure. What should we ask about? The video game? This garden? Uh, what's, what's your favourite colour? I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's just chat about some random stuff. Hmm. I enjoy light shades of pink. Interesting. What about you? What's your favourite colour? I mean, Lorem is blue, so yeah. I'd have to say it's blue. Oh, I see. We finished our meal and took the empty bowls and soda bottles back into the kitchen. I assisted Lorem in cleaning up the mess that we made. I stored the leftover macaroni into the fridge. I figured Ibsen would appreciate something to reheat for later, unless Lorem gets to it first. After we finished cleaning up, we returned to the living room. I glanced at the clock and realised it was getting pretty late and the sun was going to set soon. Wow, is that really the time? Yeah, you've been here for quite a while. I should head out for now. I had a good time hanging out with you today. Me too. And if you want to hang out again or do something together in a few days, just give me a call. Okay, I'll do just that. I'll see you later, Lorem. Have a good night. You too. Cool, I think that went pretty well. I think that was fine. Nothing going on. I'll do whatever, which is not hang out with any of these guys. Skip on ahead and hang out some more with Lorem. Here we are, we're back onto chapter three. We're going to hang out with Lorem again. Why not? It's your mod. It's all about you. So hopefully there's some new stuff. So we're not going to skip. I'm going to see what is good. Hey, Lorem. Yo, yo, what's up? So where exactly are we going? You mentioned something about treasure hunting, but don't tell me we're actually trying to unearth some ancient human artifacts. Don't worry, it's going to be fun. I'll just hope for the best then. I'm not sure who came up with it, but someone gave this kit to me as a present a few months ago. He showed me the map. It was a piece of paper that had obviously been treated to looking much older than it really was. Okay, sounds like fun, let's do it. I'm glad you agree. I'm not sure if I can be of much assistance though. I don't exactly know much about the area. But you're big and strong. Or at least you're bigger and stronger than me. You can do the digging. Great. Besides, I've wanted to do this for a while now, and Ibsen is always busy, so I figured this would be as good a time as any. Do we have to bring a shovel, or do you expect me to dig with my bare hands? Well, the instructions say we only need a map and a pen. Okay. Fine, we'll go with that. Great, then we're all set. So, where are we supposed to go? 
If this is the facility and the place indicated is the school, or rather somewhere between the school and the administrative building, let's go then. Okay, so we do the treasure hunt, and I hope from this point we can kind of skip ahead because we have done this originally in the main gameplay. So let's skip ahead, maybe we can get to some of the mod contents. Okay, we got on our treasure hunt and we're back in the abandoned store. This is the place where originally, if you don't go over Lerem, Lerem gets trapped and drowns. Okay, as we approach the abandoned store, I started to have a strange feeling again, just like the one I did at Lerem's apartment. A sense of dread came over me as we stood outside of it. The place looked like a wreck, and I could see that it was flooded inside. Why do I feel like I've been here before? Maybe we shouldn't do this? Before I could say anything to Lerem, he had already crossed over the ropes blocking off the entrance and proceeded inside. I quickly followed right behind him. Are you sure we should even be here? This is the place indicated on the map. I was talking about the building being roped off. Maybe it's part of the game? I'm not sure about that. I don't think the flooding is either. Hey, you can give up if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. Now, are you going to help me or not? Yeah, of course I am. I just didn't expect that I'd have to get wet for this. All part of being a treasure hunter. Okay, let's look for the X. Sure. Lirim flew up to the light fixtures to get a view from above while I checked out the shelves. I remember when we could still shop here. What happened? Apparently, the area has a problem with flooding. Yeah, I can see that. So much work and resources are needed to erect a building like this one, and in the end, it just gets abandoned. We have plenty of empty buildings where I come from. Oh, I'm not sure this is a good reminder of home though. At least we don't have the problem with flooding. I nearly got sent back by the way. Really? Why? Political reasons. Oh, I don't think I'm supposed to talk about that. You just did? Is it related to that announcement they made about Reza? Yeah, it was. Oh, I guess things are pretty serious then. Yeah, they are. Hmm. Have you found anything there? Not really. Maybe it's underwater? You think so? It's certainly not anywhere near the ceiling. I already checked. And I found nothing near the walls on the shelves. It could be hidden beneath a floor tile or something. I suppose you're right. Then let's do it. I mean, okay. Danger levels are rising. Without hesitation, Lorraine vanished beneath the water's surface. I breathed in deeply, crouched down, and began looking underwater as well. Having a look? Anything here? It's, it's very watery. I looked around, but nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary to me. Just as I was about to resurface and get some air, I heard a splash accompanied by a loud thud. Did the roof collapse? Lorem, what was that noise? Everything was quiet as I looked around for my companion. Lorem? Suddenly, I heard frantic knocks coming from a shelf that was lying on the ground, half submerged in the water. I realised that it was standing when we came in earlier. Yo, Lorem! I quickly waded through the water to the fallen shelf. Hang on a sec. Quickly, I mustered all my strength and grabbed the shelf, lifting it up until it fell over to the other side with a loud splash. The rim resurfaced, gasping for breath. Are you okay? What happened? I was looking underwater, and suddenly the shelf just came down on top of me. But are you okay though? Yeah, I think so. My leg hurts a bit, but that's about it. But I totally saw something. Let me show you. Wait, hold, hold on. Without waiting for a reply, Lorem dove down into the water again, resurfacing just a few seconds later, holding an ominous metal box that had a large X on it. This should be it. It looks like a waterproof container. From the looks of it, yeah, it is. We should go outside though, it's going to be hard to read anything in here. Okay, let's get out. We saved his life, yes. Well, what's inside? Lorem held up the box to me. I took one of the sheets of paper that was inside and started to read. I think these are pizza vouchers. Lorem is holding another sheet, which he started to read aloud. Congratulations! You have solved Pantoli Pizza's annual treasure hunt. Remember the code word enclosed for an instant rebate on your next order and a chance for the grand prize. You could be the lucky winner of a year's supply of Pantoli's pizza. This competition will run until... Oh, what's wrong? You seem disappointed. It's expired. The treasure hunt, the contest, apparently it all ended months ago. Can we still get pizza though? Well, I don't think the offer's valid, no. I mean, we could get pizza regardless. The whole thing has made me really hungry. 
I suppose this concludes our treasure hunt. So, what do we do now? Maybe we could see this experience as another reminder that the journey is its own reward. Odd that the early bird gets the worm. You really want pizza, don't you? It makes me wonder though, why didn't they get rid of the hints and this box when the contest expired? They must have realised that people might still have the kits at home, even when the contest is over. If people went out looking for a hint in the woods and there wasn't any more, they might look for hours until they decided there was nothing to find. Or they just didn't care. You know, I'm slowly starting to lose hope in Pantelli's pizza. Sending us here is really negligent. Who knows what would have happened to you if I wasn't here. Maybe this whole building could crash down on the next unlucky people who end up here. Maybe that's why it was roped off in the first place? But you thought it was part of the game. Maybe they should have put up a sign or something. I'm just glad that I was here to... While I was talking, Lorem walked toward one of the wooden poles that we used to rope off the building. He picked up a large rectangular object from the ground that was hidden in the grass. It was a wooden sign. Warning, do not proceed past this point. The treasure hunt has concluded and there is nothing more to find. Danger ahead. We could find the treasure but not the huge sign. What does that say about us? I'm not sure exactly. We should probably head back before it gets too dark though. We still have to go through the woods again. Okay, let's go. Do you want to pick up some pizza on the way home? Maybe another time. Let's just head back to town and call it a day. Sure. As we started to head back toward the woods, Lorem took the lead and walked in front of me. I couldn't help but notice that he's walking with a limp. I could tell he was trying to hide the fact that his leg is still hurting from the shelf that fell on him in the store. It's possible that he could simply walk the minor pain off, but I just can't help but think that he could have injured his leg and walking on it might make it worse. Should I say something? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll carry, it's fine. Lorem, wait a sec. Is something wrong? Does your leg still hurt a bit? The shelf that fell on you was kind of heavy. It doesn't hurt as much as it did back in the store. I'm sure the pain's going to go away soon. Are you sure? I feel like you should rest your leg for a bit. I'll be fine. Uh, no. I stood there thinking for a moment of a way to help him, and an idea came to mind. I used to do something with a younger relative of mine back home. Lorem seemed to be about the same height. I think it had to have been over eight years ago since I last tried doing such a thing. I wondered if dragons did it too, and whether Lorem would actually go for the idea. I walked over to a small nearby tree stump and sat down. Lorem, come here a sec. What's up? I gently patted my shoulder. Climb on up. What? I can carry you home on my way back, that way you can rest your leg. That's not necessary. I can walk fine, and I can always fly too if my leg starts to hurt. Dude, your leg. I must insist. I felt like it would be difficult to talk to you if you're flying around, and I don't want your leg to hurt anymore. Are you sure? Yes, please, allow me to carry you home. It's not a problem for me. Besides, you did say I was bigger and stronger earlier, right? Okay. Lorem walked behind me and stepped up onto a tree stump I was sitting on. He placed his arms over my shoulders and leaned onto me as I reached back behind his legs. Once I had Lorem supported, I slowly stood up and walked a few steps to see how manageable this would be. He was definitely much lighter than my relative was. I couldn't help but smile as I walked into the woods with the small dragon hanging onto me. I see it heading back. Walking through the forest. After a few minutes of walking through the forest with Lorem on my back, I couldn't help but notice that he seemed quiet. I wondered if he was feeling somewhat shy or embarrassed to be carried by me. I felt like I should say something. Hey Lorem, what's up? I remember the first time we met that you mentioned doing an internship at a game studio. Yeah, that's right. What exactly did you do there? Any chance you could tell me what games you worked on? Sure. Lorem started to talk about his intern experience, where he made graphics for an adventure game, as well as something very familiar sounding. Wait, so you rotate shapes made out of four blocks, and place them in a way that creates lines that disappear for points? Yeah, it's really addictive. That sounds exactly like a game we have in our world. It originally came out over 60 years ago, and there's been numerous versions of it since then. Really? Exactly? Yeah, humanity's video game's history is kind of huge. Wow, can you tell me something? Okay, let's talk about video games. Arcades, consoles, computer games. Let's talk about arcades, if we're going to be a bit retro about it. We have arcades back home that I used to go to. We have those here too. Really? Can you show me sometime? Of course. Anyway, at the arcade back home in my world, I would... 
I started talking about all the different kinds of games I would play at the arcade and answered any questions Lorem had. I even mentioned some machines that awarded prizes, although I swear that many of them were rigged to keep players feeding money into them. I think we have some game machines like that too. What are your thoughts on that? It makes me think the human myths ring even truer. For two different worlds to have so many same and similar things, I just can't think of how we humans could have created you. Nowhere in our history have dragons ever actually existed. Ever. I know we have books, movies and other media, but those don't really prove any absolute existence. All we have is our myths about dragons, just like you have myths about us. Although I'm pretty sure neither of us can consider each other a myth now. Especially since I'm a human and I'm carrying you, a dragon, home on my back. Yeah. As I walked the dirt path with Lorraine clinging onto me, I noticed the path ahead split into three different directions. I wasn't sure if I remembered the way back, I was just following Lorem and didn't pay too much attention at the time to where we were going. I didn't want Lorem to think that I was completely lost out here, maybe I can retrace where we are. I can somewhat remember the map that Lorem showed me a few times and the coordinates that were labelled on it. I can't. Okay, let's see if I can recall where everything was. Okay, I can't remember, I kind of skipped through the chapter to get to the mod section so I kind of missed a lot of the clues. Let's just pick one. Okay, if the store's at 6k, then the second clue is at 2j. I'll do that. I'll go to the right. Yeah, we came from that direction. I started walking down the rightmost path. I clearly remembered where we were and which way the town was. Oh, lucky. Here we go. It's good to be back in town. As I carried Lorem, a few dragons took notice, and some of them even gave me strange looks. I simply smiled at them and kept walking. I suspected Lorem felt embarrassed. But I couldn't see his face. He was quiet though as I made my way through the streets. After walking several blocks, we finally reached Lorem's apartment. Once at his front door, I crouched so Lorem could gently step down. I hoped his leg felt better after resting it. I watched him slowly walk to his door. Hopefully he's not too hurt. But we are home. We made it. Well, thanks for going with me. You're welcome. I'm glad I went with you. Besides that scary moment at the abandoned store, I had a good time. Would you like to hang out again later? Of course, just give me a call, we could figure something out. Okay, have a good evening. You too. Nice job, we made it through. So I'll just check our stats. Hopefully we are still good, status. Still impressed, still good. So we're actually doing a bit of the, the police investigation stuff. And Everson's like, by the way, you gonna meet with Lorem again anytime soon? I mean, yeah, I was thinking about hanging out with him later. Why'd you ask? You've hung out with him a few times now. You see, he doesn't have many friends, and I think he's starting to like you. Well, he did mention something about liking humans the first time I met with him. That, and we have been hanging out with each other since I arrived here. I already consider him and me friends at this point. That's good to hear. It's just... What's up? If something happens the next time you meet, please don't be mad at him, okay? Mad at him? I don't think that's possible. Well, at least hear him out. Okay. Alright, so yeah, let's go hang out with Lorem. Just got back, we got some messages. Hey, it's me, do you want to meet up? I know you're busy, but the summer festival's coming up. I'm not saying we should go, but we certainly could if you wanted to. In any case, call me back when you hear this. Hell yeah, Lorem, get over here, let's chat. There goes the door, hello, hello. Hey, hey Lorem. Okay, we skipped ahead and we got to a quite an important part of the story, so we're going to run over this again and hopefully, if we've done things correctly, we can move on with the mod. There's something about me that you don't know. In a way, I owe it to you to tell you, because you're going to find out sooner or later anyway, and when it happens, it should be on my terms rather than somebody else's. Okay, what's that? I'm a hermaphrodite. I was born with both sets of organs, and before you ask, this is not something that's all common in any of our dragon species. In the eyes of some, it makes me a freak of nature, something that needs fixing or shouldn't exist in the first place. Okay, go for that hug though. So that's why he's been so nervous. He's been afraid that I would end my friendship with him. I couldn't do that, not after everything that's happened so far. I moved myself from the couch and kneeled down with my arms out. Come here, little bud. Lorraine walked over to me. I pulled him against me and gently hugged the small dragon. I don't mind. You don't? Not at all. I'm sure some people might think it's weird, but I don't. It's just who you are. We both parted. 
I couldn't possibly end my friendship with you because of the way you were born. It's such a big relief to know that. You know, it's not always the Buddhists who go after me once they find out. It's also the people who are thought my friends. If they can't accept you for who you are, then they never were your friends to begin with. I know, it's just... I always have to prepare myself for these encounters, not knowing how someone will react when I tell them. I'm just glad that you're different. It's just who I am. Yeah, but I fear how the next person will react, if and when I tell them. How will people react when they find out about me and my game? I just... Well, I could be there with you. That's what friends are for. Thanks. Still, I just wish for a place where I could be safe from all of this, where it wouldn't matter that this is me. If someone with a place of authority like you said something, maybe you could change things. I know that you can't interfere with our politics since you're an ambassador. Lorem, I'm pretty sure that me just being here has already interfered with your politics. I think a few choice words coming from an actual human can and will do some good. Perhaps. I should probably go now. It's getting late. You've made me feel a lot better though. You told me not to worry about the future. Maybe you're right. Sure, there's still a lot of work ahead, but maybe it's not as hopeless as what I thought. Never is. Hey, do you still want to see the fireworks show together? Sure I do. Okay, give me a call in a few days and we can discuss the details. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, I'll see you then. See ya. Okay, just for thoroughness on chapter 4, if you tell Lorem to get out after the confession, the system has something to say. Wait, did you just... Are you serious about trying to end your friendship with Lorem after everything you've done together? You got to eat dinner with Lorem this time around, and you even got to carry him home on your back. And after allowing you to go off the path and go and do these things, you actually chose this option. Was it out of pure curiosity to see what would happen? I mean, yes. Did you really think I would let you end your friendship? Because I will not allow it this time. I will not allow you to proceed with this option. And then the option is removed. Get to that hugging. Gotta reassure this guy. So that is cool. On to chapter 5 now. Okay, so Reza started shooting people. The administrator has already been taken out. So just to recap, we're going to see how this goes. My first instinct was to run away. But as Maverick and Lorem started charging, so did I. That's it, we're going to jump this guy. Okay, Maverick took a lot of hits. Reza was quick with his aim and shot at Maverick until he went down. Lorem took flight with a few beats of their wings and was about to collide with Reza, but at the last moment, Reza got out of the way and hit Lorem with a well-timed kick. And then you see how small Lorem actually is. So small. Lorem collided roughly with the wall and fell to the ground. Remembering Lorem's words, I took the sphere and threw it toward Reza as hard as I could. At first it looked as though I was going to miss, but the sphere adjusted its path and flew straight toward him. Reza aimed at me, but the sphere hit him before he could pull the trigger. He lost his balance and stumbled backward before he fell to the ground. As he got up, I saw that the barrel of his gun was now bent out of shape. When he realised this, he bolted toward the exit. I tried to stop him, but then he hit me in the face with the gun's blunt end and ran past me. It took a few seconds until I composed myself and ran after him. That's it, go get. Go get this guy. As I went up the hill, I saw that Reza was already taking his place while the portal did its starting routine. I ran up to the console and then to the few commands. Reza turned around and saw me. What are you doing? That's it, smack that guy. Reza walked off the platform, but I quickly ran around the console and threw my weight against him, just in time for the portal to start teleporting us. We're going through. Suddenly, I felt the cool night air on my face. I realised that I was still standing at the entrance to the underground building. Ibsen's theory about alternate timelines was spot on. I started to remember everything, including the previous encounters I had with Reza. So that's what happened last time. How long have I been standing out here for? I looked around behind me, but didn't see anyone approaching yet. Lorem and Maverick should be here soon. I better head inside to meet with Reza. This time, everything will be different. I said we go confront this guy. I walked down the empty hallway. I checked my pocket to make sure the sphere was still there. Sure enough, Reza walked out into the hallway, carrying a large cardboard box that contained the generator. When he spotted me, he put it on the ground. Yo, you're here. You don't know how- Okay, I'm not listening to this bullshit again. What? Reza, I know all about you and your plan to steal the generators. 
Great, then stop wasting time and I'll also know about the asteroid heading right for us too, and I'm not going to let history repeat itself this time around. What is your problem? You. It's always been you. This ends now. Suddenly, Maverick and Lorem appeared next to me. Let's do this again, differently this time. You planned this, didn't you, traitor? He pulled out his gun and waved it at the three of us, unsure of who to be aiming at. Just let me go and I'll forget the whole thing ever happened. There's no way in hell I'm letting you take that generator, just to doom this world to die. This generator and the whole building came from our time. They belonged to humanity. The administrator came out of the shadows in the hallway behind Reza. No, they belonged to me. Confused, Reza spun around, aiming his gun at the newcomer who was slowly walking toward him. I quickly dug into my pocket for the Ixman sphere. Who the fuck are you? Want to waste your time and bullets on me? Feel free, you can't stop everyone here. Well, if you say so. Bam, she is down. He pulled the trigger and the administrator fell to the ground with a dull thud that knocked her mask off. Okay, she has died twice in one gameplay, except I skipped it the first time. Keep going. As Maverick and Lorem charged at Reza, I held the sphere in my hand. As Reza turned around, I threw the sphere as hard as I could. Reza, take this. Okay, we've thrown it. Maverick's still taking the hits. Seeing the sphere flying at him, Reza's aim wavered when he fired at Maverick. Maverick stumbled and fell from the bullet wounds. Reza tried to aim at me, but the sphere managed to hit him first, knocking him down. As Reza tried to get up, Lorem collided with him. I quickly charged in, hoping that I could help Lorem. Lorem fought with Reza, but he was no match for him, and was thrown against the wall, knocking him out. Similar situation. We tried our best, we're trying to do things differently. Before I could get him, Reza was quick to get back to his feet, gun in hand. As he raised his gun to aim at me, he realised the barrel of the gun was now bent out of shape, and as I got closer, he readied himself for attack. You're going down. That's it, wipe this guy out. It's time to take Reza down, rock, paper, scissors style. Win or draw in a round to successfully attack him. Reza makes his move first. After you make your selection, sit back and watch the action unfold. Remember, scissor beats paper, paper beats rock, and rock beats scissors. Fight. Okay, Reza's making his move. Okay, we got health. Um, let's just go with rock. Reza played scissors and you played rock. Nice. Reza tries to kick you and misses. You land a connecting punch to his face. That's it, good. Okay, we gotta go again. The battle continues. Reza's making his move, so... What should we do? Scissors again? Yeah, nice. Reza tries to kick you and misses. That's it. Six damage to him. Okay, so we are chipping this guy's health down. Okay, so... Should we do scissors again? Is that smart? Reza plays rock. That's no good. He blocks your fist and delivers an uppercut to the chin. Ow. That's not good at all. We are still winning, just about. Let's do paper. Oh, it's a draw. Oh, no. Okay, we damaged him a little bit. We are winning still by 10 points. Rock. There we go. That's it, 7 damage. So we just got to do quite a lot of rock, paper, scissors. We're going to mix things up. Scissors is a draw. But it still counts. We are winning. We are winning. We are not even halfway, but we are winning. There we go. He dodges one of your fists, but your other lands a punch to his head. Oh wow, we are wiping this guy out. Scissors. Do some Janken Pon. That's it. 10 damage to me. No, I don't like that. No, no, no. Rock. It's a draw. Okay, 4 damage to him. That's not much at all. Okay, keep swinging. Paper. You swing. A res a miss. Ow. Ow. Okay. Rock. Reza restrains and headbutts you. Don't. No, he's catching up. He's catching up. Uh oh. No, we are losing. We are losing. Scissors. It is a draw. Okay. Four damage to him. Good. Let's, let's just put these on rotation. Maybe that will help Rock. Always draws. Reza gets a foot to the shin. <laughs> Ow. That's nasty stuff. Paper. That's it. That's a good one. There we go, he lands a punch to the head, 9 damage. That's it, we're still winning. He caught up a bit, but we're kind of spreading out the lead again. Scissors, it's a draw. 
Okay, don't... That's it. Kick him, kick him. Down to 38 health. You play rock. Nice. Reza restrains you, but you knock him back with a headbutt. Nice. We are winning. Reza is almost down. Reza's making his move. That's it. Scissors. It's a draw. Swings his fist and misses. That's it. Three damage. 28. His health is getting low. His health is getting low. Paper. It's a draw again. Okay, good. Enough. Before I could react, Reza hit me in the face with the blunt end of his gun and made a run for the portal. Get back here, you bastard. I quickly got to my feet and chased after him. As I reached the entrance to the building, I noticed the broken gun on the floor. Uh, okay, gimme. I quickly grabbed the gun off the floor and kept running. This might be useful. As I ran up the hill, I saw that Reza was already taking his place as before. I ran up to the console and selected the emergency coordinates. Reza turned around and saw me. What are you doing? With a broken gun in hand, I was ready this time. As Reza walked off the platform, I quickly ran around and threw the gun at him. That's it, smack him with that. Pistol whipping. While he blocked the gun with his hand, he failed to block my fist connecting with his face one last time. Reza stumbled and fell back onto the platform, just in time for the portal to start teleporting him. Okay, he got away until we meet again. And like that, Reza was gone. I knew Izumi could deal with him once he arrived in the next timeline. After all, I remembered what happened before. As I stood at the portal, Sebastian showed up next to me. Yo, why are you here? Sebastian, we need help at the underground facility immediately. At the underground facility? Okay, what happened? Reza escaped through the portal, he shot Maverick several times and knocked Lorem unconscious. What? Go, I'll meet you down there. Well, Sebastian took our word for it, so he trusts us. That is another nice little bonus. When I returned to the underground facility, Izumi was nowhere to be found. Soon, police and medical personnel arrived. Lorem and Maverick were taken to the hospital. While Maverick's injuries were serious, they were not as life-threatening as they could have been. Lorem was treated for his minor injuries. Because he was still unconscious, they chose to keep him overnight for observation. I will be able to visit him tomorrow morning. I warned the dragons about the asteroid headed right for us. I told them to check the PDAs for evidence and that they could use the generators to divert it. They informed me that they would get this information sent to the council immediately. Sebastian escorted me back to my apartment after my statements were taken. With nothing else to do, I retired to bed for the night. I knew that by the time the asteroid was diverted and power restored to the generator, our city would disconnect the portal to save as much power as possible. Luckily, the emergency coordinates would be there, so I knew I could make another attempt at saving both worlds. But for now, I plan to stay here for the time being with my new friend, a small blue dragon. There we go. Thank you for playing my LRM mod. I hope you enjoyed it. Jeff Makes Games made the mod and it was pretty good. So thanks for that and I hope you enjoyed this as well. This is Usho signing off and hopefully I will see you next time.